Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is currently in its pullback. Okay, so that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, Bitcoin is currently not even in its support area. We're currently taking a look here at the daily time frame. Bitcoin is just about 4% down, as it says, at least here on TradingView, last 24 hours. And um, yeah, I mean, the forecast as we were heading into the weekend was that Bitcoin is likely working on this correction or continues to work on this correction. This is clearly corrective price action at the moment. Of course, altcoins are affected a bit more because Bitcoin is typically leading, you know, the altcoins are typically following and more volatile than Bitcoin. So that's something very important, the realization that if Bitcoin starts a sell off, mostly the altcoins will follow unless we would see um, Bitcoin dominance go down, which we don't see at the moment. So Bitcoin is coming down as forecasted. Um, we're going to take a look at this shorter time frame because it might be that um, we're already maybe doing the fourth wave in one go. But we'll talk about that. I think we're still above yesterday's low point anyway. And I just, um, you know, just to, to clarify here, someone asked me about the structure here on the way up. Um, why the wave, the one two setup is where it is. Well, I've added another microstructure that explains it. Okay, so from this wave too low in September, we had a pretty clear um, five wave pattern to the upside that I see here in this initial one two setup. Yeah, so I can count five wave move to the upside here to the November high, a small wave two down. Yep, it was a shallow wave two, but that is what sometimes happens. You can see there was no, there was no, um, no deep pullback along the way, okay? And that, uh, I have to say that, that that really makes the analysis somewhat ambiguous to a degree, okay? But it, it's the it's a five wave move up that I've got here, okay? And three waves down, yeah, it was shallow. But then we have the next one to set up right after that, okay? So let me just double check something. What we normally say is, you know, a wave, um, so let me just add that a wave one of a larger degree third wave, which is this one here that topped in January, should normally not break above the 78.6 extension, at least not sustain above it. So, and that level was here. Okay, so it touched it, perfect. Okay, so that's, yeah, it was strong for a wave one of larger three, but valid. And then this wave two pullback came down into our yellow support region. That worked out nicely as well. Um, what else then obviously looking at, okay, if this was a one, two setup, normally we want the third wave to have a certain length. So for example, first we check the third of a third wave here in circle wave three. Let's see how long that was. And I normally say that minimum is the 1.38 extension. Well, it reached the 1.618. Perfect. Okay. So the FIP levels all work here. And then the question was, okay, this wave four. Is this actually deep enough for a reliable wave four? And there we go. Typically, we want it minimally to reach the 23.6 FIP level, which it did. So you see how much work actually goes into developing these counts. I have to, it's not visually, I have to work with all these Fibonacci levels. And surely it could still be wrong. It's all based on probabilities. But using the Fibonacci levels gets me to the wave counts that are most probable. Of course, they can fail, you know, but nothing is for certain in these markets. But that, that gives MCO an advantage over many other analysts who use Elliott Wave because a lot of analysts just use it visually and then you come up with all sorts of potentials. Whereas the FIP levels, the guidelines really tell us very clearly which counts we, we should consider. Well, that doesn't give us certainty, but it reduces the it reduces the uncertainty, right? That's all we can do, really. And now it's all about, okay, um, yeah, I mean, that, that should explain it. And then if we talk about circle wave three, again, you know, minimum requirement, the 1.78, uh, 1.38, it reached a 1.786. Perfect. Okay. So it, it respects the wave count. Therefore, I mean, I'm, I can't say I'm confident about this support area, um, but it's best I've got. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not working based on confidence, really. It's, um, it's the, it's the support zone I get highlighted here in orange. Yeah between 50,000, pretty much 50,700 50, and 61,800 as a support zone. And really, especially after this extended third wave, we should hold this wave for support area. Yeah. 
Um, if not, and I, today wasn't an, an insane day, so really busy. So I haven't really had time to look at other options and alternatives, which I will do. And I will have to do that for, for tomorrow because we're coming down. We're coming down. Okay, not too rapidly, but you know what happens if we break below that support area? I have to have an alternative. And I'm thinking about something actively, um, <laughs> which would be brutal. Let's talk about that. Why not? Okay, it would be brutal, absolutely brutal. So what would be an alternative? Um, first of all, let me take out the yellow count because that's not... Well, the only um, reasonable, let's say, bearish count, but not bearish because it would be part of a bull market, but it would honestly would frustrate a lot of people and myself included. What if that wave four never finished? Yeah. What if what if the bear market, technically speaking, finished because the lowest point was reached? But what if we are moving? Bear in mind, this is a wave four. What if we're moving in a in a running triangle? What if this was the A wave of a triangle? What if this was a B wave of a triangle, but an overshooting B wave, extremely nasty? What if this was a C wave down? What is the, uh, or is going to be a C wave, D wave, E wave? And we're going to be stuck in a sideways range until, I don't know, no, 2025, you know, and then we go up. Yeah, and the way forward would be at the end of the triangle. Let's imagine, I mean, I hope not. It's technically possible, yeah. And I don't have any evidence for it until we break below the orange support region. That would be my bearish alternative. That would, however, not take us to new bear market lows. Uh, I haven't seen any analysts talk about this, but it is something I have started to consider. Um, but that is something that I have in my back pocket. But I want to mention it just in case we have something to work with in case we break that orange box. No, it would be awful. Yeah, but it would be great for swing traders. That's again what I always say, you know, regularly taking profits is um, very, very helpful because, in, you know, um, Im you know, immediate support areas can fail. But for now, my assumption will be, and I hope that this orange support region will hold. Now, let's go to the shorter time frame wave count. So here we can see ongoing weakness, especially on the weekend. Um, I mean, what are the potentials? So first of all, we now we've now landed at a support area again. Um, still the same potential as mentioned earlier in the video. So we are in this um, correction. I see no clear pathway to new highs from here, other than maybe in an overshooting B wave, which could still happen, but nothing that's a sustained break because of the choppy structures we have here. Looks clearly corrective. A wave down, the B wave might might have happened. We could now be in this C wave down, A, B, C. If that is the case, I will give you a downside target. We have a break below yesterday's swing low, not below the lowest point here though, which is at 65,650 pretty much. But if we are coming down more directly, then the C wave should reach like 62.7K but this is now a support zone again from where the yellow count and they are both potentials in this overall correction, all right? So you need to free yourself from trying to predict how a correction is unfolding. You know, there are structures we can track, but because they are all moving, well, in corrective structures, they can change a lot. That's what corrections do. It's, it's a feature of corrections. So we have this A wave down, the B wave might have topped. We're coming down in the C wave. I could just gave you a first target for that. However, I need a break below, um, yeah, basically that 65,000, okay, it's 550 level to confirm that. Until then, it's still easily possible that this is producing a wider ABC flat. I mentioned yesterday already, Bitcoin loves to do that. These high B waves, yeah, um, possible. And then we come down later. So I think I would be watching now this area for potential support. And uh, it's, it's here basically this area starting at the red line at around 66,550. See, we already have a reaction, an initial reaction. And from here we could then move higher, but I have to adjust the um, projection from for yellow wave C. Now that would not necessarily be bullish, but it would sort of extend the entire correction. All I'm watching for is basically an impulse to the upside. As soon as I see a first impulse, I will let you know and we have a long trade setup on the smaller time frame. 
until then I would just use um, corrections or pullbacks maybe to add positions. I think we should still go lower in all likelihood. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see pullbacks can be shallow in bullish markets. It could be a little bit bearish today. Tomorrow everything could look entirely different. But um, yeah, that gives you that should give you a really good overview and all the levels to watch that you need to be watching. So hopefully you like the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.